Hi, I'm Doug, and welcome to part four of my Fusion 360 for Woodworking Pencil Box Series. In parts one and two, I showed how to model a pencil box with a sliding lid. And in part three, I showed how to get photorealistic rendering in Fusion. In this final segment, I'll show how to take that model and turn it into printable plans you can bring out to the shop. One caveat, if all you need is a simple cut list, I actually won't be covering that in this video. I have, however, provided some information about making a cut list in the description. If you'd like to follow along with this video, feel free to download the model from the link in the description. Let's get started. Let's start our drawing by detailing the sides of the box and then the bottom. So I'm going to start with just the box here and I'll right click and I'll choose create drawing. Now once you do that you're going to be presented with a number of choices. The very first time we do this we're going to make sure this says create new which is the default. We'll leave this alone. I don't have a printer this large so I'll choose 11 by 8 and half, which is a landscape 8 and half by 11 piece of paper and I'll click OK. Give this a second. All right, once it drops you into this view, the very first action it wants you to take is placing the model. Um, so let's pick an orientation. I'll just choose our home view, which is kind of a this three-dimensional view, isometric view, and I'll choose a scale of one to two. So it's half size, and I'll just drop it up there somewhere. All right, we'll be covering a lot of these other settings as we go through, so I'm just gonna click OK. It will, by default, come up with this template, which includes this title block and then these guides around the outside. Um, you can just keep working with it and you'll see some of it gets filled in automatically, things like the scale or the project title and stuff like that. I don't care for this on mine, but again, we're not using this for engineering. We're just doing this for um, producing our own plans. So you can either select them and hit delete, or you can come in here and choose um, display title block and display border and take those things off. I will point out, we're not gonna go into it in this video, but you can create your own title blocks. So you can go into a designer and create these things that you can then use on your own plans and have that be what you, what you use. Okay, probably the very first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do when you get in here is uh, you'll, you'll come in here and you'll say, great, now I just wanna go ahead and add the dimensions. Um, and you can actually see, I forgot to put the splines in here. Um, so I can turn those back on just by checking that right there. So that those are filled in now. The very first thing we want to do is actually add dimensions to this to show that this is two inches, that this is eight and a half inches. And I'm gonna let you down and tell you that um, Fusion can't do that, or at least not do it well. It's going to want to use 2D drawings for all of the dimensioning, and it will not let you use an isometric view like this. If you choose the dimension tool and try to come in here and set one, it will either give you a warning that it can't do it, or it will give you this, which if you click on here, first of all, the lines come out kind of all askew and you'll really quickly realize that 6.94 is not the length of your box. I'm just gonna go ahead and select that and delete that, and we'll start kind of using Fusion the way it was uh, expected to be used, but I know that's a bit of a disappointment for me. Maybe they'll add that in the future, who knows. So to add a two-dimensional drawing, I can start either back in our 3D model or I can start here in the plans. So let's, before we get much further, let's go ahead and save these. We'll just save that in with our project and we can name this sheet. I'm gonna have everything about the sides and bottom on this sheet. So I'll go ahead and name the sheet that way so we can uh, reference it here in a minute when we get back to our model. So I'm going to click base view to create a new base view of our model. Now this will be the entire model, not just piece that we have here. And so I can either create a new reference to our model or I can reference the same one that I already have. So I'm gonna choose that, which will now just be the sides and bottom. And then I'll choose that I want to see the the right side of this. Set our scale back, and that looks great. Go ahead and click to drop that. Okay, so let's get into dimensioning. To dimension, just hit D. That will activate your dimension tool, or you can click up there. And if you have a nice long straight edge between two points, you can just click on that and drag down a dimension. And if you have a side that's kind of broken up with lots of points like this, you can click on one point, click on the next point, and drag out and then click a third time to position the dimension. Once you've done this, you can hit escape to kind of exit the mode. Then you have a lot of flexibility about where you want these to be and uh, if you want them to be outside the line, inside the line, below, and so forth. So you do have some flexibility and you can position those later. So don't get too hung up on that. If you are wanting to connect something like this, 
dimension and you want to see what's the distance between these two places. The common sense thing would be to click between the two points and drag up. But you actually have a line here that kind of connects and doesn't look as good. So I'm going to hit escape and undo that and hit D to dimension again. And you just click between the two points and if you drag straight up, now you'll still have the same dimension, but the lines will be a little bit more designed. All right, what's up with this 0.38? Well, this is supposed to be 3 eighths of an inch, but it's rounded up to two decimal places. You can control this down in your annotation settings. You can choose between decimal or fractional, and then you can choose what your precision is. So if I chose this as the precision, then it would actually show me that it's 0.375. If I switch this to fractional, I can then choose in fractions how precise I'd like to be. Do I want to be precise to the closest 16th or the 32nd and so forth? Uh, as a woodworker, we'll probably most of the time be close to the 32nd, maybe 164th. I'll set it to the closest 32nd and for this project. Now we've already added some of our dimensions here. Uh, maybe we need an overall height, so we can go ahead and add that one. Again, we'd click on the two points and dra drag out to see what that is. Okay, hitting escape again. Now let's go ahead and add some more drawings for this. We'll need a top view, a bottom view, and then the right and the left, which will end up being the back of our box and the front of our box. So instead of creating another base view, we'll create a projected view. And we'll click on the view that we have and then just drag up. If we drag up, we're gonna be going to the top of the piece. If we drag down, we'll be going to the bottom of the piece. I know the walnut's kind of making this hard to see, but it will make sense in a minute. So I'll click once here, click once here, off to the right, and I'm gonna give myself a little bit more room for some dimensions, and I'll put this way off here. If you wanted to, you can also get 3D views, kind of projected views off of this, depending on which angle you're coming in, uh, but we don't want that. We'll just hit Enter to complete that, and now we have these views. If I come in here and click on the middle box and start to move, you'll see I'm. it's gonna keep them all aligned unless we intentionally break that alignment. Let's do a few more dimensions before we jump into measuring the splines here. So I'm gonna hit D, Go ahead and show us that this width is two inches. And then I wanna show the difference here. So I can click on this line on the left and the line on the right, and then it'll show me that that is an eighth inch in there. And that's going to be our rabbit there on the bottom. Okay, let's look at the splines over here. Now we could measure using, I'm still in the dimension mode, so I could click from here to here and show that this is seven sixteenths. And then maybe again from here to here and show that that is five eighths. I'll hit escape and then I can come in here and drag that down there. I think this is gonna to be too small to do that. Well, I can try it, but you can see how kind of how it puts those lines together. Um, so this would be one way to dimension this, but instead of that, I'm gonna delete that. It might be nicer for me to show, because if you remember when we modeled this, we actually modeled from the center line on these splines. So it might be nice to show what the distance is from the middle to here. So to do that, we'll use the center line tool. And we click on two lines, and it will draw a line between the two lines, showing you the center. So in this case, this has drawn these lines in between our splines. So go back to our dimension tool. And now I can pick a point down here, and I can pick this line and show that this is a half inch. And then I can do the same thing again, pick this line, drag it out, and show that that is a one and a quarter. And that gives us those dimensions to the center. And then someone would line their, their saw cut up right here, centered on that line. We might wanna know what our kerf is here. Hit escape, and again, these, these kind of show up wherever, and so you can end up rearranging them however you see fit. Okay, so we've got some dimensions here. Uh, let's just click this one to fit it back to the window. Let's go ahead and add the bottom of the box over here. So to do that, I'll show you the other method of adding another piece to a drawing. So I'm gonna come down here and select the bottom and click Create Drawing. And this time I don't wanna create new, I wanna to add to the pencil box. And I also don't wanna create a new sheet. I wanna to add to the sides and bottom because that's what we're working on. So I'll click OK, it'll take us back to our drawing. This time I want top and I still want one to two. Now, you'll see that this is rotated differently because of the way we projected off of this side panel. It gave us this orientation. And now when we're placing directly, it's showing us kind of top view. So to rotate, we we'll just click on the rotate tool, click on a point, click again, hit OK. And now I can position this down here. Now this is kind of unclear because it's just a box. So here's where we can use either text by clicking here and typing what that is, or in this case, I'll just use a leader. So I'll click on this line 
and type box bottom. Let me go ahead and zoom in on this. Okay, so there's our box bottom and then we can just go ahead and add some dimensions. Uh, let's say between here and here is gonna be eight and a quarter and then I can just drag that off to the side. Okay, so now I've got our dimensions for our box bottom. I think the only other thing I'm gonna add right now is a title on the page. So I'll click to add text, lots of clicks. Click, click, and this will be sides and bottom. And I'll just pick the font I normally use here. You might be thrown by this and it's um, showing you the font in height as opposed to point size like we traditionally think of it. Um, in this case, I'll just choose quarter and hit okay. So just be sure to save as we move ahead. So now let's work on modeling the lid and the top. So we'll come back over here to pencil box. We'll go ahead and right click and say create drawing. Again, add to the pencil box plans. This time we will let it create a new sheet and hit okay. So now we have two sheets in here. Switch this to top. This is all old hat by now. Okay, we'll rotate this so everything kind of stays the same way. If you don't get that little green box, you can click on transform and select it and hit okay. Let's go ahead and dimension this. Eight inches long, inch and three quarters this way. Click and click, this is an eighth inch. That should be clear. Let's go ahead and do a projected view. If you ever do this and go to projected view and it gives you the wrong view, in this sense, we're looking at this from the wrong angle. Um, we, this would be kind of our side view that we um, that we want. You can either place it below like this or you can place it below, hit enter, and then move it above. So you, you do have a lot of flexibility over where you place these things. Let's go ahead and add our 3D drawing up here to match what we have on the previous page. So I'll flip back to our 3D drawing, select the top and the thumb grip, right click, create new drawing. Pencil box plans this time. Oh, we need to name this sheet, so we'll do that when we get over there. Name that sheet one. Choose the home view so we get the same angle. Choose one, two. Drop that right there. All right, we're gonna actually see something here and this will kind of help us explain a little bit more about that previous uh, panel we just had open. Let me, while I'm remembering it, rename this to lid and thumb grip and hit enter. Okay, you can see our thumb grip does not have a lot of detail. The lid does, but not the thumb grip. So if we double click on this, we can change our settings. If I wanted this to be shaded with color, I could click that and we'd actually have our wood tones. We'll leave it here on the visible edges style but tangent edges is going to be what we want to change to see more detail here on the thumb grip. So let me zoom in. If I choose shortened, the lines will not continue the whole way around, but they will show you the contour there. And what I generally choose here is full length, which lets the lines continue the whole way to the edge. But that's a preference thing, and that's your choice on how you'd like that to look. Let's add a one-to-one -one view of the thumb grip, and we'll go ahead and add that right here in this section. Great drawing. Pencil box plans, lid and thumb grip, hit OK. We want the top view. Uh, because this is small enough in relation to the page, it's defaulting it to one-to-one -one scale, which is fine, but we'll want to call that out so it's clear that this one is a different scale than the rest of the, of the drawing. So go ahead and hit, click there, hit OK. Double click again, come back in and turn on the tangent edges so we actually see our design. And for some reason, this thumb grip, when I insert it, even in practicing this, it defaults to the visible and hidden edges, and I'm not sure why. But you can switch it back here if that happens to you. Let's go ahead and rotate it so it matches kind of the way we've been doing everything else. Okay. Put that here. And we'll use a projected view to give us the side view of this. All right. So hit enter. All right, we might want to go ahead and mention that this is uh, one to one. So we'll go ahead and add some text up here. It says thumb grip actual size. Kind of move that over there. Let's go ahead and add dimensions. So just the normal dimension tool, if you, if you zoom in and get close to a radius, 
you can click and actually just pull this out here. Before you place the radius, you can right click and choose diameter if you want that instead, but I'm gonna leave mine on radius and then just click to place the positioning here. While we're thinking of radius, this would be another one here that we could do that too. Uh, and just say one quarter inch radius there. And then this one here has a one and one quarter radius. All right, that gives us those dimensions. Now keep in mind when you're doing something like this that we've already added all of our curves to it, it's gonna be a little harder to dimension because of the, the shaping. So if we were just to grab off of this long line here, it would only be two inches, which is not the total width. So just make sure when you're doing this that you grab from the widest point so it's clear what the size is. This is a two and one sixteenth, and then we'll grab from here to here and show that it's one inch. That should be the dimensions we need there. You could potentially also kind of give the measurement from here to where the curve starts, which is a half inch. Whenever your measurements go haywire, just remember you can finish what you're doing, hit escape, and then position those how you'd like. All right. A little bit more dimensioning and we can move on to the next step. Overall width, I'm gonna grab from the widest point here over to this point, drag not at an angle, because that's gonna give us that linear measurement. Instead, we wanna pull over here, that's one inch. Let's get some other measurements in here from this point this point, that is one quarter inch thickness. And let's see what the dimension is from here to here. 13 30 seconds, that's a very specific measurement. We have an option at this point. The measurement is actually 13 30 seconds, or very close to it, it's being rounded to the closest 30 second. We can either leave it like this and have someone try to pull this exact measurement out, or you can choose, you'll know for your model, but you can choose maybe in this case it's not as essential. So if you want, you can double click on it, and here under primary precision, you can drop this particular precision down a little bit. So in this case, to the closest one sixteenth, which will give it seven sixteenths. We need one more dimension, which is from down here to the top. And this one, believe it or not, was the most tricky to figure out. Because of the way this curve sets up, if you grab the dimension, click down here, and then try to grab anywhere close, it's gonna jump you over to that point here. So even if I click and drag, you'll see the line is set to intersect with this dot, not with the top. So I'm gonna hit escape and undo that. So you select on the bottom line, and before clicking on the top line, right click, and you actually have all of these options here on kind of how to snap and find what we're looking for. Now, by trial and error, you can try endpoint or midpoint or intersection, you can try these different things. The one we actually are looking for in this case is quadrant. And that will let us select the topmost point there. Now it will look like it jumps over here, but it actually lines up correctly with the top. So that's now a half inch from the top of this arc down to the bottom. All right, hit escape. Position any of your measurements the way you need to to make sure they don't interact with the other lines. If you have one of these lines that are crossing another one, you can click once on the dimension and right click on the line and say add dimension break. It will actually give you a little gap there so the lines don't cross each other. Let's go ahead and add an exploded view of the model here as kind of a summary to see how all the parts fit together. So save where we're at. And now the fun begins. Up here, we've been working in the model workspace. We have jumped over to the render workspace. Now we're gonna switch over to animation. Because we're not getting into the animation piece of this, I'm just gonna have you slide this timeline back to the stage, which let us set up the scene. And that's really all we're gonna play with today. If you do click on the, all the components here and you choose transform auto explode all levels, you can actually get, depending on your model, this might be pretty close to what you're looking for. This isn't for what we want to do, so I'm not gonna actually use it, but I did wanna point it out. All right, let's go ahead and minimize the timeline here. All right, we'll just use M for move. So we're gonna hit M, click on this left panel. I generally try to slide it one direction and then figure out how far I want it to go. So let's do minus two inches in that direction. And then you can kind of just switch right onto the next thing and find out the angle it's going. All right, so we'll do two inches in that direction. Now, you can select two pieces together. In this case, I wanna move them together for now. Let's go up two inches. And then I want to move just the thumb grip away. And again, it doesn't have to be always two inches. You can type that however you want. So I'm gonna hit okay. So this brings the last piece, which is I want to move the splines 
kind of out into the, each of these corners. This is a problem with how we modeled it, because if we try to move this at this point and we use the move tool, they're all going to move together because they're all one component. So what we need to do is we need to switch back to our modeling workspace, expand this down here where the splines are. We can select these, right click and say create components from bodies and come back to our animation workspace. So now I can select those independently and move those, which is what I'm looking for. So to make this easy, I'm just going to switch to the top mode. All right, to move these, I'm going to just draw around here, hit M, move them up. Let's see here. Let's do an inch and over an inch. Okay. Drag again, hit M, rinse and repeat here. Go back to home view here. All right, let's see here. So how's that look? Uh, this isn't perfect. So in this case, you can see how most of this goes together, uh, but some of this is is not the best. So we can you can kind of just play with this at this point now to make sure that all of the parts that you have are visible and it's kind of clear how they're all going to go together. So I think two inches is just a little bit too far to pull all those things out. The front one might be okay. And we can slide those back a little bit. At this point, you can come up to the file, say new drawing from animation. It's going to say which storyboard you want. You can name these if you want to. Um, again, we'll choose pencil box plans. We're not going to create a new sheet. We want to add this to the lid and thumb grip and hit OK. If you get a version mismatch, just hit OK. It will save and allow this to update. And now we can go ahead and place this exploded view. I am going to let this one be shaded and make sure our tangent edges are on so we actually see the shape of what we're doing and hit OK. And now we have an exploded view of the entire model. Using the techniques I've already covered, you should be able to put together a cover sheet like this one. If you want to insert your logo, use the Insert Image button. At this point, you're ready to go to a PDF. So you can click Output PDF, make sure it says All Sheets. If you want to see it right away, click Open PDF. We'll ask you where to place it. Once you've saved it, you'll see that you actually have your plans here. Um, and so you've got everything here ready to print or email or sell, however you like that to work. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this provided a good overview of some of the drawing tools in Fusion 360. I will mention that if you're going to do extensive layout, you may find it easier to start in Fusion 360 and then do the final layout in a product like Adobe Illustrator or even Inkscape, which is free. If you have any additional questions that I didn't cover in this video, please feel free to leave those in the comments below. And thanks again for watching.